on the first day of the week, the disciples went to the tomb and they found the stone rolled away. Alleluia! Christ is risen! He is risen indeed! Alleluia! Indeed, alleluia! Jesus Christ is risen today and the worship group, the singing group, will lead us now in this time of worship. Thank you. with you. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. We come now to a time of confession. Let's just take a moment as we bring before God those things we have or have not done or said that have separated us from each other and from God. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. May the Father of all mercies cleanse us from all sins and restore us in his image to the praise and glory of his name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If you'd like to turn to your orange sheets, you will find the, the collect for today. Let us pray together. God of glory, by the raising of your Son, you have broken the chains of death and hell. Fill your church with faith and hope, for a new day has dawned, and the way to life stands open. In our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. June is going to read our first reading. 
The reading is taken from Acts, the book of Acts, chapter 10, reading from verse 34 to 43. Then Peter began to speak. I now realize how true it is that God does not show favoritism, but accepts from every nation the one who fears him and does what is right. You know the message God sent to the people of Israel, announcing the good news of peace through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. You know what has happened throughout the province of Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John preached. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power, and how he went around doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil, because God was with him. We are witnesses of everything he did in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They killed him by hanging him on a cross, but God raised him from the dead on the third day and caused him to be seen. He was not seen by all the people, but by witnesses whom God had already chosen, by us who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one whom God anointed as judge and the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness in him through Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Early on the first day of the week, whilst it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord of the, from the, out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place, separated from the linen. Finally, the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went inside. He saw and believed. They still do, did not understand from the scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to where he, they, say, they were staying. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realise that it was Jesus. He asked her, Woman, why are you crying? Who is it that you're looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you've put him, and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned towards him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said the things to her. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Fantastic. It's fantastic to see you all. It really is. Thank you for deciding to come to church, to gather in church this morning. We all make decisions, don't we? All sorts of decisions every day, like... Um, what we had for breakfast, or what you choose, what we have for breakfast, or what we wanted to wear to come to church this morning, or uh, what to watch on TV or Netflix when we get home, or um, when to eat our Easter eggs. Yay! <laughs> for all, all, all of us are making all sorts of decisions all the time. But people often, when it comes to making decisions, they often put off the big decisions, the bigger questions like, why am I here? What is the purpose of my life? And these are the most important questions of all to ask. The biggest decisions that any of us have to make, whether we're young or, or old or somewhere in between. Mark Twain said, Mark Twain rightly said, there are only two important days in anyone's life. The day you were born and the day you discover why you were born. And in the Easter story, Pilate asks the big question to Jesus, whether he's a king or not, and he says, who are you? And Jesus answers, to this end I was born, for this cause I came into the world, to bear witness to the truth. Jesus knew for this cause I came into the world. He knew that he'd been born for this time, for this very moment, to die on the cross, to give his life, to save the world. And you know, even though Jesus' death was something that God had planned, even before creation was created, 
And even though the Bible foretells it in many different places, and even though Jesus told his disciples exactly what would happen and how he would die, it still came as a great shock to his disciples and to his friends when it happened. You know, some of the hardest funerals I've, I've had to deal with are the sudden deaths, the unexpected deaths. Because there's nothing that you can really say to a family to console them. All you can do is, is be there with them, weep with them. Because everyone's stunned. Their world's been turned upside down. Suddenly, no one's seen it coming. They've not been able to prepare themselves for what's happened. And those are exactly the sorts of feelings that the disciples were feeling at the, at the, at the point in time when Jesus is dying and died on the cross. Their hopes, their dreams also died with him. It's because we actually know the Easter story so well that we forget just how shocked Jesus' disciples and friends felt because they didn't see it coming and they were stunned and totally devastated on that Good Friday when it all happened. But as their world crumbled, as they ran away afraid, they thought it was the end of the story, but it wasn't. And it isn't. And as he died, Jesus actually spoke his last words from the cross. He said this, it is finished. And it wasn't a cry of despair. It was a declaration that his work was now complete. It was done. And far from being over, the story was only just about to begin. And what I want to say this morning is this. No matter how hard life is, no matter how devastating it might feel, no matter how hopeless we might feel, especially looking back over this last year and as we, as we recover from what's happening this last year, Jesus, remember this, Jesus makes the impossible possible. Jesus gives us new life even out of death, even out of hopelessness, even out of despair. And it's not done by us somehow trying harder. It's all through faith. So, why were you born? Why were you and I born? We were born to put our faith and trust in Jesus Christ. And you know what? That faith is the same faith for all of us. Whoever we are, wherever we lived, in the past, in the present, or in the future, it's the same faith. We see that same faith throughout the Bible from thousands of years ago, even before Jesus was born. It's the same faith. It's amazing. It's amazing that God requires of all of us exactly the same thing, which is to believe in him and to trust in him, to trust in his promises for our welfare on this earth, to trust in his promises for our welfare in eternity. The Christian faith is universal. The Christian faith is cosmic. It, it covers everything. God so loved the world. God so loved the whole world. John says in his gospel and Jesus says I am the way I am the truth I am the life no one can come to the father except through me the people of faith in olden days in the old testament they looked forward to the cross even though they didn't know that it was the cross they were looking forward to and today we look back to the cross with exactly the same faith and hope as they had. Our faith is the same. The only difference is, is in our knowledge today. We have the privilege of knowing a little bit more, of understanding how our salvation actually works. And it works like this. 
Our faith in Jesus works like this. There's an incredible exchange that takes place at the cross. Jesus died in my place. He took my punishment for my sins. Instead of me taking it, he took it. So I could go free and not have to die. Jesus says, those who live and believe in me shall never die. And another exchange also takes place at the cross. Jesus also gives me and you his righteousness. So now I'm accepted because of the righteousness I've been given by Jesus. It's not my righteousness. I don't have any righteousness. It's Jesus' righteousness. And that swap means I'm now treated like Jesus is, as God's own son. It's remarkable, it's brilliant, it's amazing. Astonishing, amazing love that God has sacrificed his own life to save us. And the cross is God's declaration that his work is finished to the whole world. It's his declaration of his unconditional love. It's his declaration of his victory over sin, over death, and all the misery and pain that comes with that. I, I was trying to think of a word that would it, describe God's love, amazing, astonishing. But it's the word I, I've heard before, and I'll say it today. It's a scandalous love. It's a scandalous love that we see at the cross because we, we can't get to the bottom. We can't really understand how great and the depth and breadth and height of it. And I don't think anyone, I don't think anyone has ever really fully registered just how much love was poured out, has been poured out at the cross. Only in eternity... I believe, will, will that full revelation come to light for all of us. The full, the full enormity of what's been done. And that love he gives to us, that love he loves us with, simply by believing and trusting in God, we, we, we receive the benefits of it. Eternal life, our eternal welfare, no matter who you are, no matter where you might be on this earth, no matter when you might have lived on this earth, no matter how good you are, because it doesn't depend, you can't earn it with goodness, you can't earn it through merit, no matter how bad you are, because you can never place yourself beyond such an such enormous, astonishing love, his saving love. And it's the same faith that we respond with, no matter who we are. It's the reason we've been born for, to put our faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Let's rejoice this morning on this Easter day morning and embrace that love, each one of us, in our own lives and in our own hearts. Let's bow our heads, let's pray. Lord God, loving Father, open our hearts this morning so that we can see again or perhaps for the first time your astonishing and wonderful love for us which you poured out on the cross through Jesus your son laying down his life thank you Lord Jesus thank you for this astonishing rescue for this incredible exchange which happened through your love. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that we know that because you died for us, there's nothing that you won't do for us. Lord, fill our lives with this truth as the foundation of our lives for all our decisions, the big and the small, for all that we are, for all that we do, for all that you want us to be, and for all that you want us to do. To you, Lord Jesus, this day and every day, be all the glory, all the honour, now and always. Amen.
We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please do sit down and Caroline will now lead us in our intercessions. Almighty God, we celebrate this Easter morning with thanksgiving as we remember your son Jesus who overcame death on the cross and opened to us the gate of everlasting life. Grant that we who celebrate with joy the day of the Lord's resurrection may be raised from the death of sin by your life-giving spirit through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Jesus overcame death and conquered every fear that we could imagine. Jesus, you are alive and your influence in the world is growing and will continue to grow. You are bigger than anything or any situation and your power is real. In Isaiah chapter 11 verse 9, it confirms the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Love overcame. Emerging from a cold tomb, all the truth, majesty and creativity of a living God. Transforming a broken heart, making a quiet return in a still and sorrowful garden. The gravestone rolled away to release redemptive love. Jesus resurrected and restored, comforts a weeping woman, speaks with travellers on a journey, meets with his faithful friends. The word of God has come alive and the extraordinary transformation of heaven and earth is complete. His resurrection can be seen today in changed lives as the spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead, lives in us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for the whole church of God, that your church may be continually led by your Holy Spirit. And here in all saints, fill us to overflowing with the power of your love, so that we may show concern for others. We give thanks for our church leaders Robert and Rachel, and for their commitment to bring the message of your love to our community. And this week we pray for the marriage preparation course as it starts. We pray for good communication and understanding for the three couples to learn more about their commitment to each other 
and to receive greater wisdom, faith and love in their forthcoming marriages. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. And we pray for people known to us who need to experience your healing in their lives. And I will leave a moment's silence for you to bring anyone known to you who is suffering to the Lord. We pray for your healing touch, Heavenly Father, to be felt by these people in their lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Heavenly Father, on this Easter day, in the warmth of your unfailing love, may our faith blossom and bear fruit. Living in God's power, may our fruit be compassion, generosity and kindness to others and to ourselves. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. The risen Christ came and stood amongst his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then they were glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let's offer one another a sign of God's peace.
Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love, you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ you shared our life, that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night he was betrayed, at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. <coughs> he broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ, our risen Lord. And with your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. <coughs> and as our Saviour has taught us, using the traditional words of the Lord's Prayer, let us pray the family prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Continue to pray as we approach the Lord's table. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may ever more dwell in him, and be in us. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one breath. So draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you. Eat that, and eat in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith, 
and with thanksgiving. Amen. Let us pray. God of life, who for our redemption gave your only begotten Son to the death of the cross, and by his glorious resurrection have delivered us from the power of our enemy, grant us so to die daily to sin, that we may evermore live in, with him in the joy of his risen life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Let's praise God. Fantastic, fantastic, fantastic. Would you like to be seated for a moment? Words of blessing, words of blessing. In whom we trust is not Oxford AstraZeneca. In whom we trust is Jesus Christ. He is the one that gives us peace so we can sleep at night. He is the one that gives us joy to live our lives and gives us peace to face death whenever that comes. And to him be the glory for wonderful things he has done. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace, 
his peace, shalom peace, eternal peace. Amen. So let us go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Amen.